Dude, hitting the going live button is actually like the reaction image of the dude in front of the tornado saying, here it comes. As soon as you hit go live, play the new Dome Keeper update. Didn't change game name. Where's Big Ambitions? Is Big Ambitions dead? Are you going to play Resident Evil? How was the Peloton ride today? How, Chad, how long till the first Costco update? It's like everyone's good. They, they got the muskets loaded. The voices never stop. Any tips on getting the baby to take Tylenol when they're sick? Now, there, hey, there we go. Now, that's a message. Um, I don't know. Here's the thing. Because, I mean, they should be taking liquid Tylenol, not like a, uh, a capsule of Tylenol, depending on their age, I guess. Usually we find, we've been blessed. I'm actually going to knock on wood. I don't believe in superstitions, but, you know, now's not the time to be making enemies. We've been very lucky that we haven't really been sick for like three months. But whenever we have to give our baby Tylenol, she usually, she's like, I don't want this. Then the first drop hits her lips, and she's like, oh, <laughs> is that uh, artificial grape? Ooh, is that artificial grape or cherry? I think that they make the, uh, the baby Tylenol, like, pretty tasty. I don't know what it tastes like. The only... Um, like medicine as a child that I remember the taste of is I used to get a lot of ear infections and they would always give me the banana amoxicillin to the extent that I actually started to like enjoy the taste. But I, for some reason, I think it's a love it or hate it thing. I love all artificial uh, banana flavoring. I'm sipping a glass right now. Bro, no! Oh, the... The, uh, how can you say this without it being TOS? The burp. Uh, no, you can't take antibiotics for fun. There'll be antibiotic resistance that will build up and then you won't need the antibiotics when you need them versus the Chad. Haha, <laughs> banana amoxicillin tastes good. Just had an ultrasound to find out how far along my wife is in pregnancy. Turns out it's 24 weeks. I'm going to guess that you probably thought it was earlier than that. I mean, that's like, that's more than halfway, man. That's crazy. Well, it's not, a, no, that's not the worst thing that could happen in an ultrasound. Like, not even to be macabre, but like the worst thing that could happen in an ultrasound while still being like semi-funny is being like, hey, I, let's see how far along our baby is. And then your ultrasound technician is like, you mean babies, right? You mean babies? Like that first ultrasound, supposed to be around like 12 weeks, I think. Um, I was just like, I was hoping the baby was happy and healthy, but I was also hoping for the love of God, please let this be one child. <laughs> not, not two or three or like an insanely cruel twist of fate and like four. I don't know if you can like get to five without the use of like fertility drugs it may be it's possible like in an infinitesimal possibility but i don't buy that story of the the russian woman in the 17th century or 18th century where it said she said that she had like 75 kids or something like that one set of uh quintuplets like two sets of quadruplets 10 sets of triplets, 15 sets of twins, something like that. No shot, bro. No shot. No shot. I don't buy it. In the year, like, you, in 1776, you could just make stuff up. She probably kidnapped a bunch of kids and then was like, no, no, I had them. And then she hired, like, the world's smartest mathematician at the time. It took him six weeks to calculate the exact permutation of quadruplets, quintuplets, triplets, and twins that she would need to get in order to hit the number. And then the world's smartest police officer in 1771 was like, well, I can't possibly verify this data, so we're just going to have to trust you. Did you feel, and this, this is, I kept this in the, in the input buffer from earlier. Did you feel like you were ready to have your first kid when you had, well, your only kid when you had her? Or was it just anxiety? Well, like, I, I don't remember is <laughs> the honest answer. What I will tell you is that 
you're 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 gonna be fine. I've said this a few times over the past couple of years, but really, like the first three months is like it's actually I wouldn't describe it as easy, but it's pretty easy to not mess it up. Like you're basically ooh, you're basically just not sleeping a lot, but you know the baby is a pretty simple machine. It's like you know if they're crying. You give them comfort, you, and if the comfort doesn't work, you give them milk, and if the milk doesn't work, you check their diaper, and if the diaper's not dirty, then you're like, okay, well, like, <laughs> enjoy crying. <laughs> Sometimes they do just, you know, be crying. But you don't have to learn it all, like, you know, on the first day. It's like the first couple of days, I still remember, I, f I feel so stupid, that like, you know, we did like a class before, um, before uh, the baby came out. We had like a, a nurse come to our house and basically teach us how to be a uh, how to be parents, and she prepped us really well. But you're still just like you're stupid, like because you've never had a kid before. You don't know what's going on. So like when we had our when we had our baby, we slept in shifts for like three days because we were like, oh, we can't all be asleep at the same time, because uh, somebody has to have eyes on the child at all times. And then, like, you know, night four or five or something like that, we all just passed out. And then we were like, this is not the way that nature intended this to work. And then you realize, you know, you just gain sleep when you can. And, like, when, the, I mean, the baby especially, for the first, like, seven months or so, maybe even more, they don't even move, really. Like, if you put them somewhere, they're just going to stay there. You shouldn't leave them unsupervised, but, like... You know, you don't have to be, it's not like a teenager where like every morning you got to walk by their room and make sure that they're still like, you know, asleep or something like that. And they haven't snuck out to some kind of party. Anyway, the, the point is you'll, I mean, I'm, you won't be ready. Your partner will probably be ready. Like, I mean, if, if you're like two weeks away, I mean, I, I vaguely remember life in the, in the pre-child era. Every day for like the last month was basically just Kate being like, get this baby out of me right now. <laughs> Do they need to sleep in another room? I think it's up to you. Like, um, we, we had the baby, her crib was in the same room as us for like less than the average length of time, I would say. Like probably six months, maybe. And then we moved her to her own room. A lot of people have it for like um, like a year. It was helpful for us though. Mostly because like it's, it's not even the baby's thing. It's like, it's me. Because every time she would make any noise, I would like wake up and look in the crib and be like, try to like see if her chest is still rising and falling. And then like, I'm so amped up on adrenaline that I'm like, I gotta, uh, you know, it takes me like 40 minutes to go back to sleep. It was, it was self-care for me to have her go into her own room. Same thing, we would never, like, co-sleep, because I, I would never get some sleep, because I would always be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake up and be like, sorry, I crushed the baby, you know? But, like, by all accounts, I know co-sleeping is not recommended, but, like, I know people who have done it, and... This is anecdota, or an anecdata, sorry, I'm not trying to say you should do it, but I know lots of people who have done it and it's been okay, but still, like, I, I wouldn't be able to make it. I know people that still sleep with their three-year-old in the bed. I, we, we had a, another parent at daycare that, that co-sleeps with her, like, three-year-old daughter. And I'm, I, don't, I don't think it's weird, it's just like, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> But I will say, I, you know, it's, it's been a long time. I'm 34. It's been at least 10 years since I've done this. But as a kid, sleeping in the same bed as your parents feels amazing. Like if you got scared watching a movie and then you're like, you know, hey, mom, hey, dad, I'm scared. And you go in there and you sleep with them. Oh, man, it feels so good. It's the, the comfiest because you're more secure than you've ever been before. Or than you've been in a long time. You feel so safe. Meanwhile, your dad is probably like, what the fuck, my fucking back, <laughs> my fucking, <laughs> why is my nine-year-old kid still sleeping in a room with me? The Revolutionary War, he would have been on the damn front lines, like, packing 
black powder into George Washington's musket or something like that. Now we, I accidentally rented Starship Troopers from the video store thinking it was age appropriate and the mosquito aliens start slicing off troopers' heads and stuff like that. Now I gotta go to the chiropractor? You'll figure it out. You, you learn it day by day. It's not like, you know, you have a, 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 it's not the LSATs, you know, you don't have like a big test on it that you gotta pass. Instead, it's like, you know, day one is basically just fucking welcome to the show. And then like day, you know, five is like you have your first diaper blowout or something like that. And then, you know, you, you just go through uh, bit by bit. The test actually comes like 15 years later when your kid drives or maybe even like 40 years later when you're when your kid is now an adult and they're driving and they make like a right turn from the middle lane. Then you failed. You failed the test because of the actions of your child. But like, you you don't have to sweat that at like the baby age. I think the most difficult phase of having children is over or still ahead. I have no idea, but like, you know, sometimes I'll listen to podcasts. They're all about economics. <laughs> but they, you know, before the economics talk starts, they talk about, you know, like their lives. Some of them have kids that are like my daughter's age. Some of them have kids that are like teenagers. And the, the ones with teenagers are like, it gets harder every year. And I'm like, that it can't be possible. Like, it, I, I think my, my hunch is that it gets harder in different ways. And easier in other ways. Like, I don't think any year could be harder on the mom than like the first year, year and a half. Especially if you're nursing. You're feeding a, another mammal from your breast like 12 times a day and even if you're using formula like you're still it's it's high maintenance right now sure as a teenager like i'm sure that they'll yell at you for like just doing your best <laughs> and like probably make bad decisions but and and that's harder like i don't have to deal with that for my daughter like i never come home or i never pick her up from daycare and i'm like why do you smell like whiskey but she might ask that of me. I'm joking. I'm joking. But at the same time, like your kid's in school eight hours a day and then has like two hours of homework and then like, you know, probably wants nothing else but to talk to their friends through the rest of the day. So like you and your spouse actually have some downtime. His ass was not joking. I'm joking. I only drink insert odorless alcohol here. That reminds me of... Uh, I was talking about Justin watching that Canadian game show talk about it. Got me laughing because in one of them, they're like, we're going to talk about gin. Okay, for 20 seconds. Gin, it's an alcohol, it's a spirit, it's made from juniper berries. Then I swear to you, this lady says, it's an odorless, colorless, tasteless liquid. I said, what the hell are you talking about? Is it colorless? Yeah. I, I mean, by default. It's certainly not odorless or tasteless, though. It has like a very particular odor and taste. <laughs> it's like one of the first things people would mention about gin is like, oh yeah, it kind of tastes like an air freshener. Do you see that my clip got posted by the Germa Out of Context account? The clip where I say I, I love Germa, I don't understand his community because every clip is titled like absolutely fucked streamer does psychopath thing and it's just like 15 seconds of him eating a ham sandwich and all the comments are like, this dude is fucked! <laughs> <And I'm laughs> But then all the replies on the on the Twitter video are like, this guy's fucked too. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on, man. They're a little right. I don't think I'm fucked. I think I'm just, I don't know. I think I'm normal, but I'm just funny. So when you misrepresent your normalcy as insanity, the average Twitch viewer is like, what the hell? This guy's crazy. Because the jokes that they're used to from like their friend circle is like, that's what she said. Sounds like my nickname in college. Hey, that would be a great name for like a folk band, you know? And I'm out here weaving like a more intricate web, kind of like the George R.R. R. Martin of shit posts. And like George R.R. R. Martin, we got a lot of similarities. Both love Jimmy Kimmel. Um, well respected. Elder statesman in our craft. And neither of us do a whole lot of writing. Humblest streamer. <laughs> I know it's it's a little crongo. It's my favorite joke template right now. Is least blank blank or uh, most blank blank? Like when Dan he was trying to write uh, a word in MS Paint, but he first he said 
He tried to draw it with the paintbrush and then he went, wait, how do I uh, make text? Then he made the text, but it was way too small to see. He said, how do I make the font bigger? Then he made the font bigger. He typed the whole word, but the text box itself was only one character long, so you could only see one character. Then he expanded the size of the text box and the word that he wrote was spelled wrong. I, it felt so good to write world's most tech savvy boomer. I, like it felt, it felt incredible. You know, why do people keep crashing on those yellow barriers in Vancouver? Because people don't make the effort to drive sensibly here. I saw the post went, like, I, I, I didn't realize that the post escaped from Vancouver local and, and had become, like, at least a, a, a national viral tweet where there's, like, that SUV that... Well, because it was like a, a local polit a newscaster was like, City of Vancouver, it's time to remove like these concrete barriers that keep uh, people from traveling too fast on streets that are mostly for cyclists and pedestrians. Because look at this. And it was like one person um, that marooned their SUV on top of like a six inch tall concrete barrier. I guess it was probably like a foot tall. But like... Everybody was deservedly clowning on them. Like, how bad do you have to be at driving to beach your SUV on an on a ankle-high concrete barrier that's bright yellow? Like, and I, I saw, because Green9090 posted it, and I, I replied, and I, and I said, I live here, and the only thing that surprised me about this is that it's not a white uh, Tesla Model Y. Because, like, that's the new I-don't-know-how-to-drive car. But like, I, it, it, listen, somebody like beaching their car on a concrete barrier is not something I see every day. But it, if I drove in Vancouver and I saw a car beached on one of those things, I wouldn't even slow down. I would just be like, it's another day at the office. Average person is not very good at driving. Plus, um, you know, a lot of people live here. Plus, if, if I have a, a genuine complaint about Vancouver I mean I guess I've got several but like a, a bad but I find semi-accurate stereotype of Vancouverites is that they're very self-absorbed <laughs> maybe myself included and uh, that that can have bad impacts while you're driving if you think like for example that it's more important to like look at your phone than it is to uh, to look at the road, which is one of the only ways that I could imagine accidentally uh, beaching your car on a eight inch tall bright yellow concrete divider. Like they didn't just clip it, they drove it like the, the middle of their car is on the divider. I know I said this before, but Van Vancouver makes it deliberately inconvenient to drive. Which I think is good, although when I'm driving, I'm annoyed by it. I'm like, you know, you're just trying to turn and like every street is like, oh, only local traffic can go here. This one's closed to cyclists. This is a two-way street that used to be a one-way street. This is a two-way street that used to be a one-way street. But like I, I recognize when I'm in my car, I'm like, this is annoying. But then when I'm uh, walking or I'm on my bike, I'm like, oh shit, I love living here. And I am a person, not a car. So <laughs> I've... <laughs> I consider that that's probably, uh, you know, a fair trade. Also, and I, I think I've, you know, if you want to own me on this one, you could call me world's most uh, self-aware driver. But, like, I now, I, I fully respect the, the cyclist to driver dynamic. Because when it's sunny outside and warm, it's so easy to park, man, because so many people are driving their bike to work. When it's rainy outside, impossible to park because everyone drove their car. So every day that I'm driving and it's a sunny day and I'm like, oh, I'm annoyed I have to wait like three extra seconds for like more cyclists to, to go straight through the intersection so that I can turn right. I'm like, yeah, but when I get to my destination, oh, baby, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to park like, you know, six inches away from the door. So why drive? Because I'm picking my kid up from daycare and honestly, I just don't feel safe with one of those like bike trailers on the back with my kid in it or a seat on the back with my kid in it. I'm confident like in my own cycling abilities, but I'm not confident in not getting clipped uh, by like a, a base level BMW SUV. Someone is like FaceTiming while driving, while watching like YouTube and uh, posting on Instagram at the exact same time. 
I feel like we need, bike lanes are great. Vancouver's got a lot of them. But we need to just build like bike um, cities. Because the problem with the bike lane is if you're in the car and you're turning right, the bike lane is on your right, but people in the bike lane are largely going straight. So I think we should just build like an exact replica of like every city and place it like next to the city or maybe like on top. Maybe it could be like a second floor <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> world's sanest, uh, uh, North America's sanest city planner. Also, I never get mad at cyclists. I think this is like the, well, I get, let me rephrase because I do get mad at cyclists, but I haven't finished my sentence yet. I never get mad at cyclists like, oh, that dude did something illegal um, and I'm pissed because he's going to get to his destination three seconds faster. I only get pissed when they do something that I'm like, buddy, you're going to get yourself killed. And I just hope like it's not my car that does it. That's the thing. It's, it's not, I'm never like, oh, there's a, a, a cyclist like in my lane and I'm going five kilometers an hour slower than I otherwise would be. Like that doesn't bother me at all. I'll just wait till it's safe to pass. When I see them like, you know, on a, on a very busy road, like filter passing through traffic in the middle, I'm like, buddy, you're like, you're, let me, I'm, your wattage is crazy. Like I can see your calves. Like I know you're working hard, but at the same time, you're like, you know, you're, you're one distracted driver away from becoming like a, like a meatball. Okay, they did try a two-tiered city in Final Fantasy VII. It didn't work out well, but that's because the people on the bottom got jealous and fucking blew up the spire holding up the top, okay? So as long as we just, like, if, if they could just chill then it could work for everybody, I think. Oh, they wasn't, they wasn't even poor! Barrett was a property owner. Cloud Strife had like, I don't even want, like 99,999 gill worth of materia in his back pocket. They were LARPing. Like he's an ex-Shinra soldier. He had a damn pension. Come on. Main screen, turn on. Someone did make a post. I, at first I was offended, but then I was like, actually, it's probably astute. Why don't we get together and call ourselves an institute? Said NL playing Mario Maker is basically like um, elder millennial subway surfers TikTok videos. I guess it's true. You know, there's like a little bit of uh, podcast style banter. And then just what you're seeing on the screen essentially doesn't matter. It's just there to, like, distract your cerebellum. How was your first acid trip? I'll let you know when I get there, brother. <laughs> Would you take acid in your 70s? Bitch, I don't know. That'll be, like, fucking 2040-something. 2050-something. <laughs> I don't know. What's it? I might, we might be drinking acid at that point, you know, we do already breathing it a little bit, especially if you got a gas stove, like we do. I don't know, man. If I get to the 70s, I'm doing crack? That's if you make it to 70 with like a 16-year-old's brain. Like, there's a reason that people like in their 70s aren't like, okay, I guess I'm going to start smoking crack. It's like they're living a straight-edge lifestyle because even living a straight-edge lifestyle comes with like you know, its own inconveniences as you get older. You don't, like, hit 80 and you're like, well, I got nothing to live for now. Let me just, like, start doing hard drugs. It's like your ass can't even eat, uh, like, salt or you'll die. You gotta, you, if anything, you gotta switch from, like, regular gasoline to premium as you get old. You gotta treat yourself better just to feel, you know, a fraction as good as you did. You're right, I'm going to start smoking crack now. That's the spirit. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm going to, like... The thing that is stopping me from, like, doing drugs right now... I mean, there's... there's it depends on the drug, right? Any drug with, like, insanely obvious, deleterious effects to your mental, physical, like, social well-being... I just... I don't want to do that shit when I'm 80... I got a damn child. 
the one I, oh, like my daughter gives me a call. It's like, she's, hey, uh, uh, I was, oh, hey, dad, uh, it's 2035. How do you change a fuse? That's only 12 years from now. And I'll be like, oh, sorry, honey. Daddy's like, daddy's in a K hole right now. Yeah, exactly. Someone said the same thing verbatim. But then there's others where I'm like, I don't know, I have like responsibilities. <laughs> it's not to say you can't be like a responsible user of some drugs which have various legalities in various parts of the world. But certainly, like, I'm not at a place in my life right now where I can have a, 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 a trip that has, like, a 12-hour half-life or something like that. Like, I don't, I don't have that kind of luxury, unfortunately. I'll just, like, eat snacks made of fried corn. That's good enough for me. Maybe when I'm, like, 80, instead of, like, doing ketamine or picking up, like, a needle drug habit, I'll just start, like, eating sun chips. Nobody's going to look at an 80-year-old man and be like, Hey, cut, cut down on the sun chips, buddy. <laughs> People might be like, Hey, Grandpa, you should probably stop doing so much heroin. Everyone should try a psychedelic once. I don't know. I'm already pretty out there. I'm, I'm pretty psychotic. I had cereal and a muffin for breakfast this morning. No milk? Uh, I'll have you know, I used milk. I expanded my horizons. If we didn't have milk in the house, it wouldn't be a problem. I would just eat the cereal dry. But as long as we have three one and a half liter containers of oat milk in the fridge, I'd be stupid to not use the oat milk because uh, I'll probably end up throwing out like one and a half of those in six weeks anyway when they go bad because we don't consume that much oat milk. But at Costco, they only came in a three pack. If you had to choose Costco or Peloton, what would you choose? Right now, I would choose Costco because I today's my 90-minute Marty. I only got to do 80 minutes because for my first two rides, shit kept having like five seconds of buffering every 10 seconds. So I had to do, I had to like hard cycle the, the power on the bike. For 60 minutes, I was composing a tweet in Peloton to my, uh, to Peloton in my head. Hey, kind of crazy. Maybe you could explain to me why your service is such shit lately. Pretty crazy that it's 2023 and you can't manage to stream 480p video uh, wirelessly without buffering. Meanwhile, like, every 18-year-old kid in Estonia is building, like, their own streaming app to... Anyway, long story short. <laughs> after I, after I t hard cycled the power, it worked beautifully. So I said, okay, fine. I guess I'll just uh, hard cycle the power before every single ride. It is another, much like DoorDash, Peloton is a company. I, I love the service. The company is crazy to me. I don't understand how they could be losing so much money. Much like DoorDash, you're like, I'm paying six, I paid like two grand for the bike and then 60 bucks a month for the service. And all you do is stream video to me and pay like 20 instructors. Like what, how, what am I missing here? The CEO drinks water with his bare hands. This is what bothers me. There's plenty of things you can you can hate about Peloton. John Foley is not the CEO anymore. He got pushed out by um, activist investors. He got pushed out by activist investors last year. Now they have some CEO that probably has like a, a bunch of history coming into companies that are like near filing uh, liquidation for Chapter 11 bankruptcy or something like that. And uh, is just like you know, cutting costs nonstop. Yeah, probably uses a damn cup for his water. I am a, I'm, I'm a Peloton defender and a hater, for sure. The defender is, it's too expensive, but it's still, I'm getting way more out of it than I'm paying for. Feel great, much better shape, lost a lot of weight, better mental health. It's a healthy ho uh, hobby, et cetera, et cetera. Could you do it cheaper? Absolutely. But I'm like, it's, it's almost like one of those things where you're like, if I'm paying this much, how can you have the audacity to not be making money hand over fist? And I guess part of the answer is that like, a lot of the people involved did make money hand over fist, but the company itself is not doing well. That's how I feel about my $50 a month gym membership. I mean, I hear you. It's like, I mean, and I'm not saying you people are hypocritical. I'm saying people in general are hypocritical. Like, they're, they're literally, like, I'll drink two cans of sparkling water on stream. People will be like, isn't that a little much? Like, are you supposed to be drinking two cans of sparkling water a day? Meanwhile, like, while watching the stream, their ass drank, like, six IPAs while watching the stream. Like, why don't you Google, like, how many IPAs a day is okay to drink? 
there's, there's got to be like a term for this that I'm inelegantly dancing around. If something purports to be good for you, it then has um, a much, much, much higher level of criticism and scrutiny than if something, if you know something's bad for you. Like if you took two multivitamins a day, people who drink 12 cans of Mountain Dew a day would be like, two multivitamins? Aren't you worried about your kidneys? This is, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the amount of plus twos I'm getting. You know, the Peloton at the end of the day is simply a tool. You know, it doesn't revolutionize bike riding. The real advantages of the Peloton are not like, whoa, I'm, the $2,000 bike is like, you know, it's, it's completely changed the way that I cycle. The main revolution is that like the classes are good. Plus it's in my room. So like every day I don't have an excuse to not get on it which made it insanely easy to fall into the habit of it. You know, you never have a day where you wake up like 10 minutes late and you're like, oh, now traffic's going to be bad on the way to the gym. I'm going to have to park further away. The machines that I use are going to be like uh, occupied now. Like maybe I'll just skip today. You're like, oh, I woke up 10 minutes late. I guess I'll just cut 10 minutes off of my, you know, bowel movement and then, you know, hop on the damn saddle. Plus, there's a real thrill to passing people nonstop when they have the uh, thin blue lion avatar with the Punisher face. It really makes me feel good about myself. And that's probably like an indictment of my own moral character, but it feels like you're winning. <laughs> when you're like, I'm faster than you and uh, we wouldn't get along in real life. I just won twice. What do you mean Che Young would love the thin blue line? You don't know that. It wasn't Che Young, okay? It was her stylist. She's taking a lot of heat right now. Why is it that her stylist is not taking any heat? I need to get Kate in here to give me the, the straight dope about the Twice drama. Che Young from Twice wore a QAnon t-shirt uh, during one performance. And then like a couple of days later, wore a shirt outside that had a swastika on it. Which is not good. <laughs> I don't think I need to tell. I don't think I need to tell you that that's not good. I, again, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I was gonna say I don't care. That's not really apt. I guess I do sort of care, but like, I don't. I don't know if she dresses herself or if everything is micromanaged for. Um, for the these bands, like I have no, it could just be one renegade stylist for all I know. Oh, thank you, Apollo. Thank you. You do see, like that symbol in Korea, as like, um, cause it's it's from like you know Buddhism originally. So you'll if you go to Korea or you live in Korea, you'll like see it on, uh, you know, some temples or or some churches and stuff like that. I didn't go to Korean school. I merely taught in one. I feel like it's... Uh, it doesn't pass the smell test for me that, like, an adult wouldn't be aware of the... <laughs> I don't know, the, the legacy of the symbol. Um, if you're, like, 14, maybe, like, I could see it, but... But again, why am I even waiting in here? I don't even... Who cares? Well, I mean, not like that, but... <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I'm just... Because I saw some people there, like, well, in Korea, they don't really learn about the Second World War. And I'm like, well, someone uh, should have told my students that when uh, I had a one-on-one a, a -on -one lesson with a kid, and I was like, this kid's really advanced. I'm going to blow his mind. I'm going to teach him... Uh, a lesson about uh, the North African campaign about the Second World War, and this fucking 15-year-old kid is, like, correcting me. Yeah, it's kids in America who don't learn about the Second World War. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't even... I definitely don't think that's true. But I saw it in chat, and I, I couldn't miss the opportunity. <laughs> to... I'm sorry! I'm sorry. It's just funny. If anything, if you're American, you should be proud that I make fun of your country because that means your country is in a position of strength because comedy is about punching up, okay? If you're from a country that literally I've never made fun of on the stream, you should know that that's probably because 
it would be considered insensitive to insult your country because you're probably going through like some real shit right now. So like if anything, if you're American, you should probably be flattered that I use America and Canada, to be fair, and England and also like Sweden as the, <laughs> the main punchlines for jokes, okay? What about Burundi? I'll be honest, I'm just ignorant to like Africa's uh, involvement in the Second World War. Oh, that hurt. Except for, you know, North Africa and, like, Italy and Ethiopia. I know Italy's not in Africa, but, like, the the Italian campaign in Ethiopia. I don't, I don't know what happened, like, south of the Sahara. I don't... I didn't say that they were just chilling, okay? <laughs> I am capable of getting myself in trouble with, uh, with my words. I don't need you to put words in my mouth. I did not, in no way did I say that they were just chilling. There's some like anecdotes from World War I that really make the war, like it, it obviously I didn't live through World War I. I was born in 1919. But like um, when Shackleton went to the damn South Pole and then the expedition failed, and his ass was like adrift in the Southern Ocean for 11 months or something like that, eating flies and like hunting narwhals to survive, like eating his crewmen and like all their horses and, and dogs and shit. He eventually got rescued. First question he asked, who won the World War? Who, who won the Great War? That shit was still going on. Can you imagine? Shit would be demoralizing. No one on the crew died. Okay, whatever. <laughs> That's... After I watched the... Listen, I, I didn't live through that either. I For a brief period, I got interested in Arctic exploration. Well, like the history of it. After I watched The Terror on um, FX. I was like, whoa, did that shit really happen? <laughs> anyway. then So I, I listened to audiobooks while I fall asleep. I downloaded an audiobook that was like about the... A, a doomed expedition to the North Pole. I do not recommend um, listening to that shit as you fall asleep. Chapter one is like people's families begging them not to go. Chapter two is like everybody's having fun and getting wasted like the first two days on the voyage. Chapters three through 100 are like people's limbs falling off uh, due to frostbite, discovering frozen corpses in the in the wilderness, like having to eat your pack animals just to live, but then being like, but I gotta ride that fucker back to the boat, so like, what am I gonna do? Like, there's not, not great, uh, not great bedtime material. By the way, NL, you got the wrong thumbnail on today's Sporkle video. Is it wrong thumbnail by like, it's a duplicate thumbnail from recent, or do I have like, um, do I have sunship face? You're wearing your QAnon shirt. Oh, no! <laughs> that was meant for uh, YG Entertainment at contact, uh, contact at ygentertainment.co.kr. I was... <laughs> it's a joke! I'm joking! I've got my FAR exam tomorrow. Is this where I ask what's FAR? And you say, you know, farting on your dick. In balls or something. <laughs> oh, it's part of being a chartered account. It's an honest question, okay? I feel like... I know that there's accountants who do things that are not just taxes. You gotta be well accredited to be an accountant. But it's, it seems also to be like one of those jobs where your peak skill as an accountant is like right before you take the exam. And then after that, like every year, aren't you just like sending people emails that are like, what percentage of your home do you use as a home office? And then like inputting numbers into a form. I'm not insulting the job. I'm just saying it seems like, or maybe it's like being a doctor, you know, where like as you to get your, to pass the MCATs, you got to be like, and then coenzyme Q is used as a catalyst in order to, and then when you're actually a GP, you're, every single meeting is like, you should lose 20 pounds. I'll see you in two years, right? It's like the same... I don't know if being a lawyer is like that. And again, I'm not elevating one pro profession above another. As a lawyer, there's a lot of like, oh, 
well, there was one case in like 1975 where we established a precedent that's actually like it could be relevant in this. Like it seems like a lot of digging into into course law and stuff like that. And I'm sure there's like accounts that do that. Like if the IRS sues you and you've got to be like, actually, um, I talk about working out on my stream. So my home gym is a home office. And also, sure, by area, um, my home gym is... Oh, we responded. By, by area, my home gym is only 10% of my house. But by mass, my home gym is 25% of my house. Because look at all these heavy plates. I thought you meant by mass. Again, I'm not, I'm not knocking accountants. But it always, it's the same thing. Like I think about it when I'm... Well, when my accountants do my taxes... Because, like, I, they're all, like, you know, they have their CPA, they have their CFA, and then, like, 90% of their communication for me is, like, hey, just another reminder, um, if you could send over that receipt for the digital camera that you bought in February of last year, we could knock this out today. I'm, like, they shouldn't have you, there should be someone else sending those emails, man. Like, it should, you didn't go to school for 12 years to be, like, a babysitter. Like, I don't understand... Like, if you're, like, a business with 10 employees, what do you do as the accountant? Like, don't you just make sure that your company makes payroll every month and then, like, hit a button that sends out the money? <laughs> like, in my head, I know this can't be true, okay? But in my head, that's, like, a five hours a month job. It, there has to be more, but, like, don't they make sure they're not breaking any laws? I don't know. This is why I asked. Thoughts on Kate believing she has some prophetic powers? <laughs> She's made some good decisions in her life. I feel like lots of people, if you, if you put them onto, like, a, a polygraph test, if you put them on a lie detector... Lots of people would think they have above average precognitive abilities. Lots of people have had experiences in their life where like they dreamed about something or someone and then like the next day there was news about that person. I'm not a hater. People, you know, to some if you can believe whatever you want as long as it's not like hurting other people. I mean, you have to acknowledge that some people by the strictest definition of being psychic are psychic. There's probably, like, one person out there who, like, once a month has predicted exactly what will happen daily. The same way there's three investors who have consistently beaten the S&P 500 for their entire careers. It's just the law of large numbers. When you got seven billion people doing it, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep, put them into the pachinko machine, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. Most people are getting sorted into, like, statistically not psychic, but then, like, a couple of a couple of people are making it down like 20 years and then there's two then one of them's getting faded and then like somebody is dying thinking that they're psychic being psychic isn't or being statistics is not being psychic excuse me everything is statistics at least that's so that's the lens i interpret my life through everything is probability you might think when I go to the when I go to McDonald's later today, 100% chance I'm getting chicken McNuggets. Nah, man, I don't know. Probably like 95. But everyone, I don't know what kind of person I'm going to be when I go to McDonald's. There's a 5% chance that maybe I see something new on the menu and I'm like, give me the McCrispy or something. It's Lent though. The hell is Lent? Is it 525,600 minutes in snowflakes and Dandruff and cups of coffee. That's rent. No, the rent is too damn high. What is, is Lent when you give things up for 40 days? Or is that like Noah's Ark? <laughs> Wait, 40 days, is 40 days, 40 days and 40, they really liked 40 days biblically, huh? Uh, this isn't a bit, I, I, if you've ever seen me do like Bible quizzes on Sporkle, I know nothing about basically any religion <laughs> at all, <laughs> except the names of some of the holidays. 40 is just a significant number in the Bible. Okay, it's, it's symbolic of being spiritually testing. Okay, I mean, that's, I'd say that's fair. 
Lent starts on Ash Wednesday and ends on Easter? Is this all just like a convoluted way to sell calendars? Because aren't those two holidays that happen on different days every single year? Listen, this is not Justin not knowing what day Christmas is. That shit is the 25th every single year, okay? Easter is messed up, though. Easter's got to be one of the only holidays that actually, like... I was looking at chat instead of where I should land. Easter's one of the only holidays that drifts uh, months. Like, you cannot say what month is Easter in. I feel like it's usually April, but like a quarter of the time it's in March. Easter can ha uh, thank you. Easter can happen any day from March 22nd to April 25th. That's crazy, man. How is it calculated? The moon gives a copy of its schedule to the calendar makers like in the last week of November of a year. And then, like, they look over the schedule together. They make some adjustments. The moon is like, I'm thinking about... I'm thinking I'll be full earlier in February this year, so we're going to have an early Easter as well. Is that okay with you guys? And then the calendar makers are like, yeah, sure. Last year it was, like, in mid-April or whatever. It's the first Sunday after the first new moon after the vernal equinox. We got we to gotta change that. Life's too complicated. Right, right after we finally snuff out daylight savings, Easter is going to be the first Sunday in April from now on. By the way, I, I know I said I'm not into chocolate. After my first two rides today, I felt like I was going to bonk. You know, I was going to hit the wall. I was going to run out of energy. Um, last time, I just powered through and had like a 30-minute ride that was like miserable. Today, I said, let's not let that happen again. Or let's not let that happen again. I got off the bike. I unclipped, wandered out in the kitchen. I ate a fun-sized Kit Kat. And I had, like, an amazing final third. Who would have... Uh, sanest uh, exerciser. Local man finds out that food I equals energy. Who would have thought? It was a game changer, man. My dad eats maple syrup during marathons. That's crazy, though. Like, that... Listen. <laughs> a marathon is, like... It's a genuine... That's a serious athletic endeavor. That's 26.2 miles of running. I had to feel, though, that, like, maple syrup... I mean, he's the one running the marathons. But, like, that seems very indigestible and, like... I, I just feel like it would be hard to consume enough of it to make a huge difference. And also, my stomach would cramp up like crazy, I guess. The gels are just sugar. Yeah, but they're like, the consistency is probably like thinner than maple syrup, at least. But maybe, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe your dad, I've never run a marathon. Your dad's, you use the plural, so I'm assuming he's run more. All I'm saying, people are like mansplaining maple syrup to me. In my second year of university, because my school has like a problematic culture of masculinity and bravado, um, engineering students try out to be uh, freshman orientation leaders. They're called frosh leaders. Several of my friends tried out to be frosh leaders. What did they do? They chugged a bottle of maple syrup in front of the audition committee. Every single one of them, after they did it, threw up in the bathroom right after they finished. That's why, so me picturing, I mean, admittedly, they didn't run 13 miles before they took the first sip. I'm imagining that it probably hits different. And they're probably, your dad's probably not chugging like a whole bottle. But at the same time, like, that's, that's my frame of reference here. Did they make it after they drank the syrup? It's a sad story. One of them did, one of them didn't. Because there's other parts to the interview process. Like, it's seriously like, everybody wants to be, everybody in engineering wants to be a frosh leader. It gives you it gives you some social capital. It's baked into like the engineering culture at my school. <laughs> Cause it's 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 just below like fraternity culture. Like they're not tying cinder blocks to dudes' dicks and then throwing the cinder block off the edge of a roof, but there's supposed to be enough rope 
so that the cinder block just hits the ground before it tears their penis off. But then like the cinder block goes through a manhole cover and then you see the guy falling with like really bad CGI. And ooh, ooh. Anyway, but yeah, they die there. You see the freshmen, they all get like a leather jacket. And then at, at, at the end of orientation, they die at purple with again, a known carcinogenic dye. The first year engineers have to go through a, a collective trauma slash torture called climbing the grease pole. It's a big muddy pit. And then a really like, I don't know, like a 30 foot tall pole that's covered in KY jelly and Vaseline and the engineers all have to work together to figure out how to make a human pyramid to get to the top. And then it's like, the idea is that like, you know, they, they've built some camaraderie as a result of that. They then, they get patches on their jackets that are like, I was at the grease pole. I went to ritual at least 10 times in one school year. I was in uh, J squad, which means I almost flunked out of my freshman year, etc., etc. That's why I say that, like, my school experience, I really feel like it was closer to the, the 80s, like, Animal House type thing than to the current collegiate experience, which is, is probably better for everybody. Yes, one year at, at Queen's Homecoming, they flipped over uh, a, a, they didn't, I don't think it was a police car. I think they flipped over a car and that led to a lot of police presence. But that was, um, that was the year before I attended the school. That was when I was a high school senior. I was not at that party. Your schooling was closer to the 80s in 1999 than 2023? No, I'm being more brazen. I think my college experience was closer to an 80s college experience in 2006 to 2010 versus what the collegiate experience is like in 2023. I think the culture, it, it's moved, moved away from that and it's moved away faster than usual, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> I went to Queens too. It is funny thinking about, like I wasn't in engineering school, but there was like a, a, a badge that engineers would get on their jacket. It was called like the triple X badge. I can't even, I can't remember what the X's were, but definitely like one of them was sleeping with your TA. And I'm like, that probably would not fly <laughs> in the, in the mind. There's like an actual like uh, obvious power imbalance there. But I definitely knew a girl who had the triple X badge and everybody was like, she's so cool. <laughs> Sleeping inside of a campus building, and I forget the last one. I bet I can Google it. What have I done here? Get me out of there. <clears throat> Triple X badge, Queens Engineering. Oh my God! There's a there's a fandom wiki for it. Oh, have have sex while wearing your engineering jacket. Have sex while being purpled, which was when your whole body is dyed purple, which is an engineering thing, and having sex in an engineering building. Eight comments. Do both people need to be purple? Next comment. So would someone who's not in engineering be able to earn the traditional triple X by fucking someone wearing a GPA, fucking someone purple, then fucking someone in an engineering building? Reply, yes. Does having sex include finishing or just penetration? Bro, and just, world's least pedantic engineers? Nah, I think it's okay if you don't finish, especially if you're a girl. It might be hard to get that done under the circumstances. So is it the same bar for art science if we have sex in three buildings? A fandom user replied, no, that is called the art side triple X. Any advice on buildings for art side triple X? This is crazy. Who's reading, who's writing comments on this? It's, it's game FAQs for sex. That's the school I went to, man. It used to be renowned as like a, a pretty good academic institution. Now it's just for like kids from Toronto to go and behave badly three hours away from their parents so they can still go home for reading week. How recent are those posts? They're from 2015 and, and 2018, man. It's, it's madness. 
Isn't that what you did? No, it was for me to behave badly. 40 minutes away from where my parents lived so that I could still meet them for dinner on Friday nights and get taken out to like Nam Pen, which was a dope ass Thai restaurant. But I, I wasn't, I wasn't sniffing at even like a, a triple X badge with an asterisk. I'll tell you that much. Now, did I do my uh, the Century Club occasionally? Did I take a hundred shots of beer in a hundred minutes? Yeah, but I definitely never uh, covered myself in Genshin Violet. I, I people are like, oh, shots of beer? What are you talking about? I'm telling you, some some of you didn't. I mean, you had a 2023 collegiate experience. I'm not holding it against you. You wouldn't do 100 shots of hard alcohol in 100 minutes because you would die. You do 100 shots of beer in 100 minutes. It's still rough. I mean, I'm not trying to have bravado about it. That's 35 milliliters times 100. That's three and a half liters of beer in an hour and a half. It makes your... Uh, I mean, you burp a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, that, it's not as easy as it sounds. And I'm, I think it's an indictment for me to say that it actually wasn't that hard at the time. But hang on, I got to look at some more of these bars, man. Extra shenanigans bars on the engineering jacket. 21 gun salute. A student must... Oh, I remember this. A student must drink 21 glasses of any assortment of beverages available at any of the cafeterias. It is widely accepted that each drink must be a different drink. All beverages must be consumed within one sitting and within one hour. Vomiting while attempting the 21-gun salute will void the attempt and probably get you thrown out of the cafeteria. Following the consumption of the 21 glasses of liquid, the person attempting the bar must then get to the other side of the cafeteria and touch the wall without throwing up. Comment. Successfully completed this yesterday. It was hard, but if you get the milk out of the way first, you should be fine. Advance to goods. In a group of three plus in formal attire or your engineering jackets with a tie, must challenge passing commerce students to start and finish a game of Monopoly in the front lobby of the commerce building. <laughs> College, it's an interesting time in a, in a person's life. Ritual, that's the one I was talking about. Attend ritual at Clark Hall Pub 10 times in a row within one semester or 14 times in an academic year. On your 10th or 14th appearance, you must bring the physical ritual bar with you and place it in any drinks you consume. If the bar is snatched from your drink, you must immediately finish whatever is remaining in the container. Note, some alumnus lay claim to a ritual squared, consisting of 100 total rituals before their final departure from Queens. Okay, this is like, even, even at my most debaucherous days, Whenever I saw, like, a 50-year-old guy in the engineering bar on a Friday on campus, I was like, bro, you, are a f you fucked up. <laughs> you. <laughs> Whenever, I remember it was, like, the first homecoming where I saw, like, because this was, like, 2006 or something. I saw people that came back. They were like, I graduated in 1986, and now I'm, like, going to keggers at my alma mater. I was like, bro, you're a loser. No disrespect. This shit, this is four years or like maybe six or eight if you stay in academia. But like that is not, you're like 45 years old now. That shit is not cool. You got to cut that out. Your doctor's going to be mad at you. As someone, I'm 34. I wouldn't go back and do that shit. That's, that's like weird, buddy. I'm not going to go to a keg party full of 18 and 19 year olds. They're annoying. No disrespect. Like if you're watching me right now, if you hung out with me, you would be like, this shit is boring. And I would be like, this person's annoying. We're just like, this is the perfect dynamic for us right now. Go back to a kegger and like some 19 year old kid is going to treat me like I'm damn Alf or something like that. It's an old guy drinking a beer. Woo! No, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> you catch me at the Costco. <laughs> We're playing some web browser-based games today. I hope you've been enjoying a smattering. Um, today's guess the game. I'm like a little embarrassed, man. I think it's the Binding of Isaac, but I'm not 100% sure. Because it's definitely Ed McMillan. And it's definitely like 
a poop. And it's definitely like a grid. And those walls kind of look like they're from Isaac. But it, maybe it's Gish. I got to try. It's not even on the list. <laughs> Binding of Isaac. Rebirth. Oh! Yeah, who's this guy? I don't know this guy. That's Henry? Bro, I played like 5,000 hours of this game. Who's Henry? Is this like the hero, Brian? He's an incredibly rare spawn. Oh, so this is for people that are on like r slash Binding of Isaac, right? Okay. Today's Cine 2 Nurdle. Average score is 4.2 out of 5. I'd say it's about average. Pony Boy um, is uh, the Outsiders. So I think that it's a gang of greasers. Excuse me? And we'll find another thing. Maybe Rosita's in there. And then I see Studio Ghibli and Japan. Oh, and I see Princess. So that's going to be like Princess Mononoke, who's also, that's, that has a wolf in it. And then we've got, I think we have King Richard as well. Because we have Venus Williams, Tennis, Biopic, King. I don't know how we're going to rearrange this, though. These are all off by one. This doesn't seem right. What have I done? <laughs> Gang, Venus, Koal. No, no, no. They're, they're like this. I'm losing it, man. The, I mean, you're like a biopic. And then Studio Ghibli can then come down here. They, I guess the Outsiders has socks in it. It's been a while. And then we just hot swap these bad boys. That takes us to four. This must be Sing, then. And this is... Princess Mononoke, this is King Richard, and this is the Outsiders. Then, we got to find the connection. Is it possible that there could be a, um, a West Side Story in here? Hi, honey. Wow, she looks so cute. Hi, sweetie. Did you hear what we were saying outside? No, what were you singing? Let's show Daddy how cute you are. Oh. And then the first thing you said, wow, you look so cute. Well, it's perfect. You're bringing me my hat? Yeah. Oh, thank you, honey. Yeah, Thanks so much. I'll put that on. Now I'm a real streamer. Oh, no. What do you mean real? Real? Oh, I was just making a joke. Did you play the sparkle? Not yet, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's not no, bald. No, no, no. Honey, can you push the button again? Daddy wants it. Push. Hey, oh, good, good job. job. <laughs> she, t she turned off my fan. It's not too much. No, no, no. It's good, honey. It's good. Come here. Come here. No, 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 no. You don't have to listen to mommy. I could always get her out of the room. I could do my Shrek impression. You don't want Daddy to do the Shrek impression. What are you doing in my swamp? Oh, she's, she's fighting you off with her magical wand. Hey, Tomo. It's a little chaotic. I think Tomo should not be behind your monitor. We'll take that up in the off hours. For now... I gotta get in the right mental headspace to do two and a half hours of Mario Maker. Oh, you're playing Mario Maker? Why are you playing Mario Maker? It's Checkpoint League, baby. Oh, all right, let's go. Have fun, honey. <laughs> okay, over the course of that, I glanced and saw the answer from chat. You were right. It is Wolfgang Biopic Music, and that's Amadeus. Very, very astute of you. But uh, took away a little bit of the enjoyment for me, but it's okay. I mean, I'm proud of you for getting it. It's AI, artificial intelligence, to the terminal. Starring Tom Hanks, Catherine Zeta-Jones, 
And that's all I remember. But, okay, AI. You got Haley Joel Osment. You have Jude Law. That's all I remember. Terminal, Tom Hanks, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Catherine Zeta-Jones. My, here's my idea here, okay? I think we'll try the daily and just invert me for a second. I think we're going to go Catherine Zeta-Jones. We're going to go Oceans. She, I know she's in one of the Oceans. And then we're trying to get to essentially Tom Hanks. I feel like Tom Hanks and George Clooney were in a movie together. Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts, more like a Meg Ryan sort of thing, but Tom Hanks and Shaobo Kin ever in anything together? I don't know. I haven't seen Bridge of Spies. I haven't seen um, Turner and Hooch. I haven't seen, let me think here, Tom Hanks. It doesn't have to be Tom Hanks. Wait, we're not trying to get to Tom Hanks. We're trying to get to Jude Law. <laughs> Jude Law is in Repo with Forrest Whitaker, who is in Panic Room with Jodie Foster, Dwight Yoakam, Jared Leto. Jared Leto, who's in Fight Club with Brad Pitt. Jared Leto, Panic Room. Forrest Whitaker, Repo, Jude Law, Artificial Intelligence. We are so back. We might have taken a little longer, but that's, that's the scenic route. This is throwing me off. It feels like the end of my workday. We normally do do this at the end. Today's Rotten Tomatoes is, they're all from 1998 right now. Which is okay. That's, that's kind of in my wheelhouse. Flashbang out. Um, it's a comedy drama that's well-loved from 1998. It's three words. It's keeping the faith. It's about freedom. And it is to our own enslavement that this powerful, brilliant, and profound film speaks. This is Kicking and Screaming, but not the Will Ferrell movie. The entire movie is, dazzling, is a dazzlingly executed conceit that plays expertly on our sense of media manipulation. <laughs> what is You've Got Mail? <laughs> I don't know. Jim Carrey. Oh, it's the Truman Show! Oh my God. Well, you should have put that in the first clue. Okay, we were just talking about the Truman Show today. Saw it in theaters as a kid, loved it. Saw it on Netflix like three years ago as an adult, loved it. Great movie, great movie. Crude Petroleum. Okay, for first, $3 billion. It's not a lot. Not a lot of exports. It's not a small amount, but it's not a ton. We've had some that were in like the hundreds of millions. So we got, they export $300 million worth of rice, 400, no, $1.17 billion worth of crude petroleum, railway cargo containers, ships, non-filet frozen fish, hard liquor and gold excavation machinery. Yet again, I'm thinking that this is like, um, like Central Asia. I'm going to start with like, um, <clears throat> let's start with, I'm going to go Georgia again. Not a great guess. It's to these, it's 10,000 kilometers away to the Southwest. 10,000 kilometers away. <laughs> um, to the southwest um, it's uh, Uganda it's 10,000 kilometers away to the direct west okay so it's a, like how can something only be I mean Uganda is not 500 kilometers away from Georgia so there's some trigonometry going on here I'm going to say that this is uh, Uruguay. Seems like it's roughly at the same latitude as Uganda. Just uh, back of the napkin calculation. 4,000 kilometers away to the north. This could be like a, 
well, I'm, I don't think it would be in the Caribbean. 4,000 kilometers is quite a distance. Hit me with a, just hit me with a Panama for now and let me, let me see where we are geographically. It's 2,000 kilometers to the east. Um, <laughs> east of Panama? 2,000 kilometers east of Panama? <laughs> um, <laughs> ooh, uh, what is Haiti? South east of Haiti. Guys, I got to tell you, folks, I'm stuck in the lift. All I can think of is like Curacao. I can't even spell it. Or like Guiana. But it's, it's to the east of Panama. Guiana, but 2,000 kilometers to the east, like an island. Southeast of Haiti? It's like the Azores. <laughs> it's the, um, I, it, for the life of me, I couldn't tell. I'm, I think I'm, I've got a big blind spot. I do feel like it's in the Caribbean, but I don't know. I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm just going to yeet it, man. I'm going to say that it's the Dominican Republic. To the south, it's Gu it was Guiana! <laughs> Oh, I even said it. That was a tough one, though. We danced around the whole thing. People were like, why didn't you guess Venezuela? The shit was wrong, idiot. But you're like, yeah, but your wrong guess wasn't as efficient as my wrong guess. What are you talking about? Also, there's no... You know why I wouldn't say Venezuela, dummy? There's no way Venezuela has $3 billion of imports. They're like an OPEC nation. Venezuela total, or sorry, exports. Venezuela total exports. 144.7 billion. You were off by a factor of 50. That's why you wouldn't say Venezuela. There's like a, something's not right with global. They've got an advertisement, but the advertisement's not working right. So it's just a black box in the bottom of the screen. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. That looks better. Yeah, but my Haiti was, you guessed Haiti instead though? But Venezuela was wrong. You're like, are you really out here splitting hairs? My wrong guess was better than your wrong guess? Yes? All right, well, as long as you have world's most self-aware Twitch chatter. I, I could catch you in sixth grade going up to the teacher. I know I got the answer wrong, but I did it the right way. Can I have a half mark? Okay, we always start Algeria. It's not Algeria, but it's, it's only a thousand kilometers away. That's not too bad. Give me a Senegal and then we'll just see. It's further away. Okay, give me, give me an Ethiopia. My sense of scale might be a little messed up. No, further away. Okay, so I think we're going north then. Maybe let's, let's say to the northeast and let me just get an Austria in there. Closest border, 320 away. Blaze it. Okay. Let me, let's go down here. And why don't you give me like a Moldova? No, it's f slightly further away. Why don't you give me a, a Denmark? It's further away still. So it's closer to Austria. Okay. Why don't you give me an, it wouldn't be Andorra. Shh. Austria and Denmark, and then Algeria, and then Moldova. I'm like, uh, <laughs> it's in Ireland. I feel stupid. It's not Ireland, but Ireland is closer than Algeria. It's not possible. It's not possible for this to uh, resolve. Maybe it's um, Lithuania? 
Lithuania. It's not Lithuania. That's even further away than Ireland, but closer than Algeria. <laughs> it's like Luxembourg. Oh, my brother. I was doing like calculating 17 different eigenvalues here, trying to figure out where the hell it could be. Catch my ass was like, oh, Belgium would be a stupid guess. Then I was like, but Luxembourg, Luxembourg might be right. Hey, we're slightly below average there, but that's not so bad. I didn't forget Western Europe is a thing. I was just like, I can't guess France on that. It's like, it's, it, 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 it's just the trigonometry didn't make sense. I'm not going to guess Spain. I'm not going to guess Portugal. They're so much closer to Algeria. Malta would have been maybe reasonable, but okay, guess the game. I'm going to do guess the game from yesterday because we didn't do yesterday's. Ooh, t dude, honestly, today's, uh, yesterday's guess the game is Divinity Original Sin. I'd recognize these pallets of wood anywhere. Divinity Original Sin 2. What? Metacritic score of 88. Is Diablo 2? That doesn't look like Diablo, brother. I gotta stop you right there. This, this does not look like Diablo. That looks a little bit like Diablo. This does not look like Diablo. I'm gonna skip. Originally on Windows. It's another damn MOBA or something. Is this, maybe this is a Baldur's Gate 2? Baldur's Gate, Jeez. um, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition Pack? No, it's an RPG. I'm mad. Skip me. Released in 2018. Shit looks a lot like Divinity. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Could this be Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire? Oh! Oh, I knew, I knew it was... What's this company called again? I was going to say Pentamin, but then I was like, Pentamin is too recent. I play Obsidian. I played Pillars of Eternity, of Eternity 2 Deadfire in a demo at E3 with Mathis. It's a great game. While I was playing it, in my head, I was like, this seems great. There's no shot I'm ever playing this shit ever again. <laughs> okay. This is the worst opening in chess, maybe. F4 is pretty bad. Maybe it's not the worst. F5. D4. The one guy, he's just moving pawns. And this is three minute time controls, so like you don't expect greatness, but this, they're, they're literally just making moves at each other. They're not, there's no plan at all. And it's over already. That's the end of the game. He didn't take the force, he didn't take the guaranteed checkmate by, oh no, it's, sorry, I'm the stupid one. He's got a queen here. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Either way, I'd probably still keep press. Oh, no, 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 they're doing a sensible thing. Then you push this up and you get the queen. Or you, I, you, Me, personally, I would have put them in check so I could capture the queen. But what do I know? Um, actually, no, it's so much... Listen, I'm getting a little too academic. Um, this is also good. Then you block with the rook, and then you take this with the queen, and it's checkmate because they can't take you because the, the king is pinned. So they've resigned. Okay. Anyway... Um, this was the worst 15 turn game I've ever seen. This must be, I just, I, I almost can't fathom 100 to 599. So I'm thinking this is 600 to 899. Like this is really bad. They're 1219. No, I don't believe that. 1219 is not great, but like it shouldn't be that bad. That ending is not 900. They, every, almost every single move was like an inaccuracy or an error. It wasn't bullet. It was three minute. It was, it was, I don't know what you call three minute. 
It's like pseudo blitz. Discover check alone is a thousand. No, it's not. <laughs> it's putting people in check just to put them in check is like that's like a five hundred move. Anyway, I was wrong and you were right. So, okay, this seems this seems like a pretty standard London to me. But what do I know? I think it's oh, no, never mind. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Move over here. Put the rook under attack. They put your knight under attack. You take that. You take that. You take with the queen. Push this. Take that. Take that. Take that. Move over there. They've protected their rook. It's a novel concept for sure. Put more pressure on this. Probably pin the knight to the queen. No, castle. That seems fine too. Put the king in check. It's a great move. If king goes here, then you take the pawn with the bishop. Oh, knight blocks. Okay. Well, you still take the pawn with the bishop then? This person has formulated a plan, at the very least. It's a bit messy. Okay, well, like me personally, I probably wouldn't have done that. But what do I know? They just they can't quite figure out how to break it down. Oh, that's a fork. Okay, I mean, black will win this game. Honestly, this doesn't seem that far off of my level i'm gonna say this is also an 1100 to 1299 game they are 693 i'm starting the question and i i could just be that i'm consistently wrong i'm starting to question the integrity of ranktal you should at least we should make sure that these games the people took like a breathalyzer test before they put the game in the database because i feel like well, you know what it is? I, I think just because someone's at 12, 1100 to 1299 doesn't mean that they're playing at 1100 to 1299 level, okay? Some people at uh, 1100 play a little bit like a 1500 and then they make like a 200 level error and then the whole game is like 450 level overall. They should be, the engine should evaluate it at approximately this ELO or something like that. Instead of like, oh, they're a 1300, but then they had 10 double IPAs and they went on and played bullet and they, they played like a 400. Anybody who said that this is a 2500 plus though should be banned from playing this game. Okay, E4, E5. I love it. Look at these. These are gamers. They came to play. You got to respect this. They're trading pieces. They're trading paint. They're hanging pawns for no reason. Beautiful move. I don't know. Is this bullet? No. Okay. Why are you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> this is unfathomable. Put the king in check, threatening the queen. You just, you know, you just take the queen. They moved their king instead with nine minutes on the clock and then lost their queen for nothing. I mean, honestly, you just take the pawn. But what you could do instead is take the rook and you still are in a super winning position. And they've resigned here, presumably. No, that's actually checkmate because they can't go here because of the bishop. Well, here's the thing is like this is like a horrible game and a horrible mistake. But what's the point here? Are we trying to evaluate like did did a 2000 level player have a mouse slip? Because that's not what we're looking for. I'm trying to I personally think that this I mean. We'll just start you this right now. This feels like these could be thousands. And then this move right here. Like, that's like an 800 move. But then, this move right here from black is literally like a zero elo move. Like, that's, it's, there's just no sanity for it at all. So I'm going 600 to 899. You know, I'll go 900 to 1099. They were 862. I'll take that. At least we got, we got something there. Still a best streak of one. Rank those hard, man. Zoom in a little bit. Mmm, Schmeichel at the Gildenhall. You can imagine they had lots of great dances here at the Gildenhall. 
I mean, this looks like turn of the century to me. I'm going to say this is like 1909. I'll settle for 1908. 1929. Holy cow. It does look like Shrewd Farms. Okay. This um, certainly looks like the early 2000s. Let's see if we can glean any more info. A woman is talking on a mobile phone. That looks like a slide phone to me. I'm going to say that puts us around 2007. My man's is wearing uh, in-the-air headphones. They're not AirPods, obviously. Probably plugged into an MP3 player. Worst um, exposure length on the camera of all time. The camera's kind of like pure ass. I'm just trying to see. I see plastic straws. Trying to see if we can glean any more info. It's Christmas time. This is, this is me right here. When you're at the amusement park, but you don't want to be amused, you just want to listen to your podcasts. I'm going to say this is 08. I think she's using an LG chocolate. 2011. Oh, but it's 2011 in America. That's like 2008 in, in Canada. Okay, I understand. All right. This is certainly like a little horrifying. Dude, look at Dick Tracy. What's Dick Tracy doing here? <laughs> this is the man that visits me in my dreams. The hat man. Um, I mean, again, this to me seems like an Ari Aster movie. I'm going to say that this is Post-World War I. Put, pop me down in 1921. That's 1926. I'll take that. That's 2024 in Tennessee. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, no. He's, people just aren't buying horses and buggies anymore, sir. This month's sales figures came in. The automobile's kicking our behind. They'll be back. They'll, uh, the horse and buggy industry has been through worse than this. And they always come back. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm going to say this is early 1930s. It feels a lot like the previous photos, but now people are wearing vests. Sure, 1929. Okay, this is New York City. That may not be a, a mask. That may be just a, a wind covering, or maybe it's protecting their identity. It's Jersey Boys. Jersey Boys has been on for 15 years. So this is from 1971. That's a little Broadway joke for you. Um, I mean, everything points to 2020, just because, like, there's nobody else in Times Square, and that probably is a mask. Nobody in Times Square, and also, like, everything seems closed. That's a pretty huge indicator, I would say, that this might be, like, March 2020. Okay. That's correct. I just have to ask, if this is from 2020, why is the camera so bad? They don't have good cameras in New York? That's right, they are also wearing latex gloves. I remember that phase of the pandemic. I wore latex gloves to the grocery store a couple times. Why? Because it was fucking nobody knew what was going on. I, I wore it like two times and then I tore the shit out of a latex glove in the grocery store just through natural movements. And I said, I'm not doing that again. Chatter's born in 2021. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, hey. I was good. You know what I was going to say is at least I wasn't one of those guys who like you saw them after they bought their groceries. They were like wiping down every grocery item with a disinfectant but like i could have been one of those guys nobody knew what was happening man there's some like revisionist history here march 2020 was like that was a there was closed information there that was that was a weird time don't even make me start going off on the brought my 
the grocery store was like, you can bring your reusable bags back. Then I put my reusable bag on the counter so I could put my groceries in the reusable bag. They're like, sir, you can't put your reusable... She just looked at me like I was a damn super spreader. She looked at me like I was... Uh, Rudy Gobert, <laughs> sir, bringing your COVID infested bags, putting the bottom of your bag on the top of this counter, you son of a bitch, you piece of crap. Anyway, sorry, sorry, moving on. Oh, that's the end. We did not cross 4,000, but Rudy's not catching his stray, man. He, he, he started the damn, he started act one of the pandemic. There was a prologue, but that was act one, man. I'm not going to play pornal. By the way, if you have a pornal streak, you need to, like, find Jesus. <laughs> I'm an atheist personally, but you need to find God. Even if it's not necessarily something I believe in, I think that maybe it would provide you with what you're looking for in your life. That it might help you out a little bit. Because that's just not right. That's pretty good. It's good. Well, let's go I, ahead and uh, change that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm looking forward to it. I booted up Shell Shuffle last night, and I'm, I'm, yeah, that turns out I'm still bad at it. Didn't get okay. any better. That's okay. Uh, we really, I, I was telling the people at home that I, I, I'm not sure anyone's going to have a particular advantage going into this map. I think it's so <clears throat> difficult <clears throat> that um, <laughs> even, uh, <laughs> even those who are good at shell throwing uh, and also <laughs> might have a cold or something, uh, it might not be as much as an advantage just because it's going to come down to who can figure stuff out the fastest and who is not going to get frustrated because we have a two hour competition today and it's going to be more of a grind than a sprint. I highly recommend holding I'm ready to strong. Chill. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's I'm going to be real chill. Justin's <laughs> mental is unparalleled. <laughs> I will give true. a word of advice because this is a kind of a special map. Uh, the indicators are your friends. They always they are pretty much as accurate as they can be in this map, and you will need them 100%. There's some okay. complex stuff going on in some of these areas. Um, I believe Ryan was the only one. Uh, that being said, you guys have two hours. I don't think anyone's getting the first checkpoint in two hours on this map, but I would love to be proven wrong. That's such a bold claim. The bold <laughs> claim. Shot, I, I fully think. believe it. Uh, yeah, Jazz is one-shotting it. <laughs> there is only one checkpoint, just like Platform LD as well. So there's two sections to, to complete. Uh, okay. That being said, uh, I'm, I'm going to need a countdown. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and uh, if everyone's ready to go, let's do this. Yep. All right. Yep. Good luck, everyone. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck, my Good sweet luck. boys. Good I'm just going to meet in Deafen, but... Same. I did when I said... Justin had perfect mental. I was laughing because somebody in chat typed 90 minute Megan trainer ride. And I was like, what the hell? I got dazzled by the coins. That That is my, that is my, what's the opposite of my dream? That is my nightmare. <laughs> That's my wet nightmare. Megan trainer, I'm not being facetious. Somebody has to stop her. She can keep making music, but she shouldn't be allowed to release it anymore. I can't. I can have my Gucci on. I can wear my Louis Vuitton. Uh, even with nothing on. I made you look. I made. It's no disrespect or whatever. It has to be the most annoying music on the planet, right? And that's before we even talk about Mother. What sucks even more is I met her and she's really nice. <laughs> I'm not saying she's not a good person. I just, I, I don't say this too often, but she is like, her, the music she makes, I actually loathe. Like I feel about her like the same way people feel about Nickelback. Okay, we obviously need to send the Koopa to the right so that he lands on the stopper which is also what we need to do to Megan Trainer. She needs to be stopped. I would rather listen to Charles Manson's album than Megan Trainer's. No, it's not even a contest. I would I would rather um I would rather do a 90 minute Imagine Dragons ride for sure. At least with Imagine Dragons, like I could just pretend that like it's my eighth grade basketball tournament or something like that and put myself in a hype mindset. For Megan Trainer, I couldn't even, like, I don't know what I would do, man. 
910 minute long thunder ride. Ooh. We gotta go around like boop. She has one good song and it has like 16 streams. I don't even, I, I hope Apollo tunes in because I know that he is an unabashed all about that bass lover. I gave all about that bass a chance and uh, it's the same, it's the same thing. It's a fun song. Not if you like listening to things that sound good, in my opinion, such as Ash and Pikachu got released from Purgatory today. Buddy, what are you talking about? <laughs> They're moving on from Ash? Who's they? In the Pokemon anime? What? You know they did surgery on a grape. I know that one. You gotta bounce on that guy twice. Ash retired? Bro, he's 10. What is he? French? Ah, thank you. Thank you. He was cursed by Dialga. Are you in the wrong window? Like, are you typing in the wrong window? I don't, I just, it's not like toxic. I'm just confused. He's going Reggie Gygas mode. All I know about Pokemon is Pokemon Go, okay? You got to remember that with me. I know a, I know Gen 1 and Pokemon Go, and that's it. I love it when he becomes Mario. His name's Mario, and he bounces on the shells. Some of these levels are hotter than the hotter than the hells. And when he spins, he can survive a spiny shell. Mario, Rio, please do better, please do well. Don't start the singing, then you can't stop. So true. When you were young, you were the king of Austin Powers. And now you kidnap Nigel Powers as his foe to get the man of mystery to show. I hate giving plus twos to singing, but that was pretty good. I'm still, I'm workshopping the next part in my head. It's like, this is the room one afternoon where Fat Bastard ate you. And how Felicity Shagwell shagged him real well to place a homing device where no one dared to dwell. You could do the whole song in Fat Bastard's voice. It's very similar to Shrek's voice. I'm not going to do it, though. I love you, Minnie Me. I, you can almost see that Pitchfork headline, right? Yes, we're not joking. Streamer is composing Austin Powers' Neutral Milk Hotel-themed musical. Mini me, I love you, yes I do. And we are here for it. Track seven, you won't believe. <laughs> and one day you will go and reclaim your mojo in the submarine under the sea. Something, something along those lines. That's kind of like, I, I cheated on that one because the Dr. Evil submarine is from the third movie and he gets his mojo back in the second movie, which is the one with the secret volcano lair. But I hope you'll forgive like a little poetic license. Heartwarming streamers, heartwarming streamers love for album. Birds something beautiful. So I was at Shopper's Drug Mart the other day and I, POV, you are at Shopper's Drug Mart and... The self-checkout has an attendant watching it. They can't all be winners. I'm trying to do the TikTok voice, but it's less like Gruntilda and more like it's smoother than that. It's almost as smooth as like the ocean under the moon. 
POV. You told McDonald's you don't need a cup, so you don't have to pay 25 cents for the... <laughs> so cost, since last uh, New Year's, you have to pay uh, 25 cents or 15 to 25 cents for a, um, a bag, even at like a fast food restaurant in Vancouver. And you have to pay 25 cents for a single use cup. When you go through the McDonald's drive through they never ask you if you want a cup, but they always ask you if you want a bag. Hey, yo, A.A. Rod, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. I think that would be a good bit, is to go through McDonald's drive through and then as soon as the cup fee comes up, be like, ah, 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 I didn't say I wanted a cup. You take that off of there. And then they'll be like, how are you supposed to, how are we supposed to serve you your drink? And then when you get to the second window, Pardon me. <laughs> you just go, and they go. <laughs> I guess they don't have the, they don't have the sprayer at McDonald's, right? They have like the industrial fountain drink maker. Boof me one large Coke Zero, please. Without missing a beat, they'd be like, "We're out of Coke Zero. Is Diet Coke okay?" And even though it's not okay, you'd have to be like, "Yeah, sure," so that your wife doesn't lose respect for you. Did you take part in the riots? Yes, there's a very famous picture of me uh, shouting like this. Ah! And I'm holding a hockey stick and I've just smashed the uh, front window of a TELUS store on the corner of Burrard and uh, West Georgia. I was sent to federal prison for 17 years. Wait a minute, for <laughs> 12 years. I was only recently released. And now... I'm a member of parliament for Vancouver Center. Isn't that guy Asian? Yes. What about it? I'm waiting. Uh, 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 oh, like you're doing right now? I saw Chad in the grocery store yesterday. And I said, oh, are you Chad? I don't want to bother you. Oh, like you're doing right now? Gotta do a bigger jump there. Huh? 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 If someone called me Chad in the grocery store, I would immediately call the police. Oh. Now you like the police, huh? Interesting. Oh, I didn't say anything. I'm just... All I said was that it's interesting. That, like, when my house gets robbed and I'm like, I called 911, people are like, that's not very based of you. The person robbing you probably needed your smartphone more than you did. Then all of a sudden, you feel mildly threatened by a completely normal interpersonal interaction in the grocery store. And all of a sudden, you're like, excuse me, officer, can you help me? It's just interesting. That's all I'm, it's just, I'm just, I'm like an observer. I'm like an explorer of life, I would say. And that's just, I like to, I'm writing that down in my notebook for sure. My grill cover. <laughs> I didn't call the police for my grill cover. I just went to Canadian. I took the law into my own hands, Munka S, and went to Canadian Tire and bought a replacement. I did see on on idiots in cars though the the best subreddit. I did see the post where a lady called the police because she couldn't get her car out of a parking spot, <laughs> which was like. Had like half of a car length on each side of it. That was pretty funny. I can't imagine calling the police because you can't get out of your parallel parking spot. What are they supposed to do? They probably tase the driver of the car in front of her when she came back. You ever see the video of the guy getting tased and he just eats the electricity and says, That don't work on me, man. That shit don't work on me, man. <laughs> Los Angeles' final boss. <laughs> it's, oh, man. That's, that's an all-timer. I'm not saying he's a hero, because you're right. He does... Doesn't he point at a person after that and say, I'm going to get you, B-word? Something like that? Maybe I got two different Taser Fails videos. I do, I do tend to watch a lot of them. There's definitely one in Canada outside of like an M&M's frozen food store 
where they they hit a shirtless dude with a taser and he just he gets you can tell he gets affected but he has like resistance to it like he's been electrocuting himself at home just to prepare for this moment so he gets like he's not unfazed but he's like mildly phased and then the taser like he rips the taser electrodes off of him and then they have like another they load up another taser and that one takes him down that was in cam loop so <laughs> It it had heavy like Ontario energy. I didn't know. I've never been to Kamloops though. Cause every time we plan to go to the Okanagan, has the audacity to be on fire when we are supposed to leave. Best US TV show? Mm, I'm gonna say Is the O'Reilly factor still on the air? If not, then uh, 16 and pregnant. <laughs> what can I say? I like documentaries. Oh. My Strange Addiction went pretty crazy. I mean, it's a great uh, show, but I do think that like there's a genuine argument that maybe like the TLC... Uh, execs just in general should be dragged before the international war crimes tribunal in the hog the hag um for like not only exploiting the people on the shows but contributing to the erosion of literacy and intellectualism in the world that being said this is entertaining it's your favorite my strange addiction Guy in love with his car is like a classic. Apart from that, I can only think of um, a woman who drinks gasoline, lady who eats her mattress, lady who drinks paint. <laughs> that one's pretty bad. If you had to have a stranger... I mean, that's the funny part, I guess. I guess the guy who was having a relationship with his own car, I mean... That's, it seems the weirdest to us, but that's probably the most harmless of all the addictions on the show. At least he's not eating poison every day. Oh, uh, yeah, the lady who marries the theme park rides. Human brain, like, here's the thing. I think some people watch a show like that, and they're like, look at how weird this person is. I watch it, and I'm like, look at how complicated the human brain is. Like, you're just one incident in your life away from, like, a couple of things being rewired and being, like... I want to fuck the Superman Man of Steel ride. Like, I think it could happen to anybody. It hasn't happened to me yet, but, you know, one one Peloton accident, and I, I don't know, like a lobe gets switched or something like that, and then all of a sudden you're like, you, you pop a big old boner on Drop Zone or something. Some of them, like the guys who, like, eat roadkill and stuff like that, that's not like a brain injury. I think that's just, like, a divorce or something like that, but... But like falling in romantic love with your car? I guess I'm not qualified to say it. But <laughs> it's like it feels like maybe you just like hit your head on an exposed beam and you're like, guess what? You want to fuck cars now. One, yeah, there but by the grace of God go I. Who knows? I might be a different man after I get off my 90 minute Megan Trainer ride. Maybe I'll be like, oh, this shit is great. It's like all the music from the 1950s but modernized, which is better. This is another honest question. Haven't we, like, discovered all the melodies? <laughs> no, sorry. Aren't we tapped out? There's only so many instruments making so many notes with so many rhythms, man. People are saying it's the stupidest thing they've ever heard. I ask why. They say, hang on, I'm trying to find a video essay to explain it. What the hell? Defunct man, ha Defunct Land hasn't made a 90-minute video essay on this yet. Hold on, my opinion is being formulated. Could, could, could Drew Gooden please make a video essay on this so I have something to send to my friend? Fuck you! <laughs> Just tune the guitars lower. Bro, honest question, what the fuck is a key? Like, I know when there's a key change, but, like, why why is there a key that tells you what notes are flat and what notes are sharp? Can I play, like, what I choose? 
unironically, I did get the highest grade in grade 11 music class. I have a certificate that my parents have in their house and everything. But like, these are questions everybody wants to know the answer to. There's rules? Yeah, what do you, but rules are made to be broken. Those are called accidentals? But what if it was an accidental? I have a master's in music composition. Well, like, okay, I guess I'm not asking what is a key. I'm asking why are keys a thing? Like, I'm going to write my own song. I'm going to play it for someone, and they're going to be like, you're so off key. Buddy, who do you think wrote the key? I wrote the key. I wrote the song. Why are words a thing? Well, I think it's the same thing. Is like I, I don't equate it to words. I equate it to grammar. When people are like, oh, your sentence doesn't sound right to me. And I'm like, well, you know what I mean? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, shut the fuck up. I think it's a false construct. I, why are we still living with the rules that Beethoven had? Like, you guys are still out here. If it weren't for me, you'd still be using merely one slurp juice on a single ape. You wouldn't even be using up to three slurp juices on a single ape. You'd be like, no, it's it's just simple. It's the, the key of this ape is one <laughs> slurp juice. He's lost it. I'm, I mean, listen, I've been doing this shit for like 12 years. I'm going to repeat myself sometimes. I also resent the idea that this song is bad because the song, the rhymes aren't good. Like, oh, that, that they used a half rhyme. They rhymed the same word with the same word. Yeah, but is the song good? Or did it just fail like your weird third grade music rubric? You know what I mean? Like, what's, what's the best uh, verse of, of the 90s? Darling, don't you go and cut your hair. Do you think it's going to make him change? I'm just a boy with, with a new haircut, and that's a pretty nice haircut. One rhyme detected. They rhymed haircut with haircut. People are in tears in the audience. Now that's like... the People if people hear a song, they can tell you why it's a bad song. You hear a pavement song, I can't tell you why it's a good song, but it gets me going. There's none rules in art. So true. Mm, but I think you mean to say there are no rules in arts. Just a quick... Because if you mention that to... Uh, not to me because I'm like a nice guy. But if you mention that to other people, they might be a little embarrassed. They might correct you. They might say, they might assume you didn't go to one of the, the top Ivy League schools. I'm just looking out for you with my pedantic correction. Hey, Anel, like your glasses? My wife's boyfriend just got some new ones too. Costco doesn't judge your, your family situation. Costco, Costco's not going to intervene in your marriage, except to make it stronger, because you'll, you get a little bit of, you, you've gone through a trauma together by the time you exit the store, because just getting into and out of every single aisle is like merging onto a, you know, the most psychotic Texas freeway that was ever built. Costco's not judging you. They're just feeding you, maybe clothing you, giving you some free samples. That's the Kirkland signature promise. I have a thought, though. I don't think this is going to be popular. I think they need to make a separate food court just for executive members. Because I'm tired of like, oh, I finished my Costco shopping and like, yeah, I could go for a hot dog and it's $1.50 with a drink, which is insanely cheap. But then I look in and it's like, I mean, it's like the Roman uh, Agora in there, you know? Like it's... Uh, it's bedlam. There's 15,000 people like fist fighting each other all to get a table. Imagine if there was like a like a lounge for the upper crust, you know, for like the executive members. You had a doorman that scanned your your membership card on the way in. Actual seating. Less people because <laughs> it costs money. <laughs> yeah, sky lounge, man, a sky lounge. My ass would hang out there before the Canucks games, for sure. Imagine they started selling beer. Oh, man. Maybe they could have somebody in there to, like, shine your shoes. I wear Blundstones, but, I mean, if I don't take advantage of the services, then why am I an executive member? People actually sit down and eat at Costco? Listen, we 
when we do, we when we go to the food court, we try to. That's because we have a two-year-old. So I can't give her like an ice cream cone and have, an, have her eat it in the car. My car is going to get ruined and she's going to be covered in, you know, ice cream. We need a table. But there's, yeah, people, I mean, it's their right to sit down and eat. People sit down and eat in Target. <laughs> I mean, if you sit in a Target Starbucks and drink your drink like it's a real coffee shop, I'm sorry, I don't know what I was going to say, but it was not going to be nice. <laughs> it's going to be something like, what do you think this is, buddy? Europe? This is Illinois. Drink that shit in your car on the way to your shift. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to. I'm just like, wow, somebody's got a big head. Hmm, somebody's feeling quite continental today. Having their drink in to, to for eat in. Sir, will that uh, mocha triple cake frappuccino be for takeout or dining in today? Hmm. Jarvis, I think I'll be dining in. Welcome to Starbucks. Welcome to Starbucks, Mr. Wick. The usual, I presume? Yeah. No. Today, I'll take a triple fat cold brew. Very good, sir. The, the barista pulls out a shoulder-mounted bazooka with oat milk. And then she flips up like a scope with like a thermal sight. And two pumps of sugar. And then like wings come out of the side of it. Is this to your liking? Yes. And I'd like to use my stars. He hands one golden coin to the barista. Very good, Mr. Wick. Be seeing ya. By the way, can we talk about how when I saw uh, John Wick 3 in theaters, I said the John Wick franchise keeps getting better, and everybody said, fuck you, it peaked at the first one, John Wick 3 is shit, what's next? He's gonna be like fighting aliens in outer space. John Wick 4 comes out today shit has a 96 on rotten tomatoes you can all eat my ass i continue to be right about everything ever world's least ego driven streamer <laughs> who even said that you can go back and look at the chat logs of when i talked about uh john wick 3 everyone was like nl i respectfully disagree with you i liked when he broke bobin's skull with a book in the library but i think the franchise is peaked well I mean, it might have peaked, but still. People were going off on, on me for enjoying John Wick 3. Halle Berry sucked in that movie? No, nah, I don't think so. I think she was okay. Plus, the movie's not called Halle Berry. The movie's called John Wick. If I wanted to see a movie called Halle Berry, I would watch Swordfish. You're breathtaking. Bad chest. John Wick walks into a Walmart. The greeter says, Welcome to Walmart, Mr. Wick. The usual, I presume... He says, you're breathtaking. The greeter says, oh shit, I'm in the wrong movie. This is not John Wick. I auditioned for John Wick. Catch my ass in some Netflix original rom-com instead. Oh, fuck. This is the end of my career. That is a good bit. John, John Wick going into Subway. Welcome to Subway, Mr. Wick. The usual, I presume? Yes. The, the, they pull out an M16. Cheese and toasted? Cheese. No toasted. They remove the angled foregrip and then place a slice of American cheese over the muzzle. <laughs> Everything on it? Two lines. Listen, I can't keep this going, okay? <laughs> John Wick walking into a subway? The usual... The... Um, Bienvenue, d'accord, Subway, Madame was, uh, the, Monsieur Wick. Uh, the usual, I presume? Yes, cheese and toasted this time. The sandwich artist proceeds to make him an Italian BMT on Italian herbs and cheese with everything on it and reduced fat sub sauce. This is the one person in the John Wick universe who's not in the economy of assassins and murderers. Is literally just the Subway that John Wick goes to three times a week for lunch. Why'd you assume that they were a murderer? They're just, they're just working. Yeah, they save his life at some point, but then John Wick has to like shoot them in the femur because of the fact that if they don't, the high table will kill the sandwich artist for helping John Wick. 
I'm honestly like worried for chat. Anytime I'm having fun and being animated, people ask question like, how many rails of coke have you done today? Fucking zero. I'm just entertaining. <laughs> I've never done cocaine, sincerely. Most of the time I sound, I sound like this. People are like, oh, they, they think I have like a resting bitch face or something. Even when at the most pog moment of my life, when Captain America picked up Mjolnir after Thor almost died in um, Avengers Endgame, I went, whoa! Person next to me said, oh, what's wrong? But then I get a little animated. People immediately assume I'm, uh, assume I'm on some form of stimulant. I had a cup of cold brew at 6.15 a.m. That's about it. This psychotic streamer admits to illegal narcotic use. Jerma saying, so I had a cup of coffee yesterday. Whoo, boy, that was close. My wife had a cup of scold brew. <laughs> Dude. Oh, uh-oh, this guy. Dude, you should not have said that. Oh, man, looks like somebody's sleeping on the couch tonight. Lol. <laughs> Women be shopping. What class should I play in Diablo 4? The hater has logged on. The Diablo 4 hater is logged on. I'd love to tell you that it's uh, due to my principles. But really, I watched Dan, I, like five minutes of Dan playing Diablo uh, 4. He was uh, in the brownest, grayest forest I've ever seen in my life, beset on all sides by browning gray enemies. And also, um, just brightly colored text showing loot everywhere, like loot overload. Um, and I typed in his chat, I said, amazing color palette this game has, and then I closed the tab. <laughs> I'm sure, by and large, everybody who's actually played it says, like, I'm very surprised how much I'm enjoying Diablo 4. It seems like it's a very good game. My ass has not played it, but I, what can I say? I guess I'm the only one who's not crazy. You said you could take a panda in a fight? Honestly, I still haven't seen any video evidence that that take was wrong. Everybody else that, that, that disagrees with me so far, they seem to just appeal to emotion. You really think you could do this with no evidence whatsoever? Or they simply point to like a, a unsourced fact on the internet. One panda for one meter ran at a speed of 100 meters per second. I get maybe this is not apt. But let me put it this way. If, the, if I was the one dude with a tranquilizer gun at the zoo, and I got two calls at the same time, and one of them was like, oh, a, a man fell in the panda cage, and one of them was like, a man fell in the alpaca cage, I would go to the alpaca cage first in triage. And if the dude in the panda cage was like, save me, I would be like, bro, I'm going to get there. But for now, can you just like stay away from the panda? Like. Oh, <laughs> new record. I'd be like, sir, calm down. I'll be there in 10 minutes after I tranquilize the, the alpacas. For now, my recommendation is uh, stay away from the panda. And if it moves closer to you, move away from it again. Bro, the, if you fall in the cage or in the enclosure, oh, the panda's not going to eat you. They don't even eat like the food that they're given. And they won't even have intercourse with each other to keep their species alive. We have to like trick them. It's like bamboo scented pheromones or something like that. Like if you fall in the panda cage, fucking climb out. If you fall in the, in the gorilla enclosure, you're done, buddy. Like it's... I don't know, you better hope that they got a good guy with a tranquilizer rifle because it could be seconds before you're... And if they get you, you're not coming home. That's because we destroyed their habitat? I didn't do shit, man. I'm playing Super Mario Brothers, okay? I'm literally just... I'm playing a video game right now. 
My ass has never even been to the gorilla habitat. Pretty sure like 70% of that shit happened before I was even born. Much less like culpable for it anyway. Your ass is sitting here watching me. Like, you know, you, I'd say you're pretty innocent as well. Unless you're like a, a gorilla poacher or something. I'm, I, all I saw from that, from that excerpt was that pandas are just as ferocious as you would expect a normal bear to be. It's not true. There's no movie called Panda Man. There's a movie called Grizzly Man. Dummy moves to Alaska to live with the grizzly bears, thinks the grizzly bears are his friend. Werner Herzog listens to his dying moments on tape, tells his ex-girlfriend to burn this. Don't ever listen to it. Do me a favor. Don't promise me you will never listen to this tape. Promise me you will destroy this tape. The movie was called Panda Man. Let's just be honest. If the premise of the movie was guy gets killed by a panda, you would be like, did he break both of his legs before it happened? <laughs> did, he, did he trip and fall and then a panda just happened to wander up? and Like, because then the panda's got an advantage for sure. Werner Herzog had a good career. Why is his ass in The Mandalorian now? Because it's fucking fun, probably. My ass would be in The Mandalorian for sure if they asked me. I don't care. I'll, I'll play Dick Splitto. Doesn't bother me at all. Seems like a great time. For free? Yeah, I would be in The Mandalorian for free. It seems it's like a once-in-a-lifetime experience. If they wanted me to be a recurring character, then you gotta, we gotta make their pockets hurt. A cameo for free, though. Would you suck off George Lucas for free? Nope. Definitely not. I wouldn't do it for, like, a small amount of money, either. I would definitely do it for, a, like, a suitably large amount of money. I would do it for $5 million. Let's start the bidding at five million. And we'll, we'll, his people can call my people. I'll give you four. No, the bidding goes up. <laughs> Not <laughs> if it's between you at four and George Lucas at five, I'm, I'm, if it's between anybody at four and anybody at five, I'm taking the person at five. I don't think there's that much of a difference, you know, from my perspective. If anything, is probably, um, George Lucas would probably be easier. I bet he would come quick because he's a Star Wars fan. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you. You might do kegels or something like that. I don't, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. That's the, that's the millennial retirement plan. Hope some sick billionaire freak pays you a five million dollars to suck him off once living the dream it used to be dream so sad we used to be a proper country the dream used to be slipping on a patch of ice outside of a chain restaurant and suing them for a million dollars now the dream is that some freak billionaire wants you to suck his dick he's willing to pay you five million dollars and a horse to get it done inflation's a bitch Gen Z dream is that Mr. Beast pays you $10,000 just <laughs> or you have Mr. Beast casts you in a video that's like you can keep whatever you can eat and then you eat a, a, an apartment. You have a take on Counter-Strike too? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I wouldn't say it's going to be a tentpole game for me, but like if I could get a team of, of boomers together, I would, I would definitely play it. I like Counter-Strike. The only reason we didn't play Counter-Strike on... Team Unity is because, like, quite frankly, Apollo's too young. He doesn't understand understand what people were working with in, like, the year 2000. When, or 2001, when Counter-Strike originally came out. He didn't understand how amazing it was to just be... Like, to have a 5 versus 5 shooter that wasn't just Team Deathmatch and, like, it worked online. Oh, man. Oh, we could have made that. You can shoot the smoke now. He, Apollo just wouldn't understand. He is nowhere near me! I 
Apollo just wouldn't get Counter-Strike. You're right. It doesn't have 37 characters with six unique abilities each. Even though half of the abilities say they're unique, it's just different versions of, like, a smoke grenade. This one's up, up. Venom uses her poison fumes to create a vision-obscuring wall. Luther uses the exhaust from his motorcycle engine to create a wall that obscures your vision. There's only 21 and they're called agents. <laughs> oh. John Wick going to a Valorant store. Arrivederci, Mr. Wick. The usual, I presume? Yeah. John Wick sits down at the computer. It does what the f he's going. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Where's John Wick in round one of a Counter Strike lobby? The usual, I presume. Yeah, he buys a deagle. He runs it down mid and gets blapped instantly by a team full of people with CZs and throws his PC in the dish dishwasher. He goes to. Best Buy and buys another one with one single coin made of pirate gold. The usual, I presume, Mr. Wick. John Wick picks up a Chromebook from a stack of Chromebooks underneath a display of a Chromebook. Yeah, this one's perfect. But can it run Crisis? What a delightful bon mot, Mr. Wick. I don't want to be gauche, but can, but the the Best Buy requires your payment, sir. Can I put it on card? They exchange a wry smile. John Wick pulls out two golden pirate coins. Here's an extra one for your troubles. Very good, Mr. Wick. Be seeing you, Bartholomew. Not if I see you first, Mr. Wick. John Wick leaves the store. Every single person in the parking lot is part of the assassin economy. They all, old ladies, old men, toddlers, they all pull out guns, swords, sharp throwing weapons, and they exchange surreptitious glances with each other as they point to, that's him right there. Despite having seven broken bones, John Wick begins a pathetic jog through the streets of downtown Springfield, Illinois. Everywhere he looks, people's heads are popping out of trash cans. Uh, sorry. Uh. John Wick boards a rocket ship for outer space. He lands on the moon. The aliens on the moon. The usual, Mr. Wick? Yeah, the usual. They scoop out a little bit of cheese, which is what the moon is made of, and feed it to him. He pulls out one gold pirate coin and says... <laughs> anyway, that's John Wick 5. I'm excited. Talk about Sofia Coppola's daughter getting grounded for trying to steal a helicopter. I watched the Sofia Coppola's daughter TikTok and just didn't... I don't know if it's just that's where I like exit from culture or whatever, but I was like, I don't understand why this is noteworthy at all. To me, it just seemed like a... A 17-year-old girl talking about her life, and her life is different than mine because her parents are famous, but I wasn't, like, I wasn't entertained or enamored. I wasn't mad. It, it elicited no emotion from me. I resent, uh, I resent the internet for making me aware of it, quite frankly. People got mad. She didn't know what a shallot was. I didn't know what a shallot was when I was 17. Probably figured out what a shallot was, I would say, probably when I was, like, 20, if I had to guess. Define a shallot. Um, a shallot is when an onion decides to cost three times as much money. Oh. Holy cow, they went crazy for that one. They love that one. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I knew I'd... I knew we should have gone with the grocery store humor. You got to stay in your lane. I'm out here trying to improv all of John Wick 6. Should just be saying, and what's the deal? What's up with papaya, man? Um, why are you so expensive when you don't taste that good? Why 
am I paying mango prices for pear flavors? They, they're loving it! I'm taking this show on the road. You gotta let me get out all this craziness. I'm seeing my in-laws this weekend. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I don't really have a joke about my in-laws, but I'm gonna say it in a cadence that a stand-up comedian would. <laughs> Actually, uh, we always have a nice time. I'm posting up at the Everett Costco. We're only going for a day and a half. There will be no Costco trip this time, okay? I'm not making the same mistake. I'm not buying three kilograms of goldfish thinking somehow, like, we're going to eat it in two days. It doesn't make any sense. Catch the border agent making me snort a line of biosteel to prove it isn't cocaine going back across the border. I swear, it's just a hydration solution. It's for my 90-minute Megan Trainer rides. You're like, this guy is sus. Nobody could listen to Megan Trainer music for 90 minutes without punching their own ticket. Hey, you snort a quick Hollywood of this. I could have my Gucci on. I could have my Louis Vuitton. Even with nothing on. I made you look. I made you look. Woo! <laughs> nothing on. I made you come. I stole that from Chad. I made you come. He made you come, 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 come. POV, you are George Lucas. And I'm invoicing you on net 60 for $5 million. Don't ask what for. The the rare double callback, I know. It's like a comedy special. Like a comedy special from like this year, because it's not very good. The world went a little... Anyone else think the world's a crazy place these days? You see Chris Rock's new special? I did. I did, and I did not like it. There were parts of it that I thought were reasonably funny and then there was a lot of it where I was like stand-up comedians need to retire as soon as they get rich there are very few comedians who got like insanely wealthy and then went on to produce good work Eddie Murphy I don't know Eddie Murphy's like his trajectory but I know that he you know was on SNL so he was probably doing okay and then, like, his best work, I guess, is probably... Well, I don't know. It depends. Raw and Dangerous are, like, very important comedy specials. Yeah, I think Eddie Murphy kind of quit when he, was, when he got ahead. He started doing movies instead. I mean, this... is <laughs> not, not ready for this take. Someone said, what about Louis C.K.? I think you're actually right. Like, Louis C.K. was still making pretty good stuff. He just got canceled. It wasn't that he became, like, a bad comedian. It's like, I feel like he was a pretty okay comedian. We just He just had a dark secret that came to light. And now he's probably got to be bad at stand-up comedy, right? Because he has to do, like, the anti-woke across America tours now, where he's touring with, like, Jeff Dunham and the dude with the funny face from Half-Baked. So now he's got to... Like, that's, that is, anyone else, I don't want to go on off, off on a rant here, but does anyone else think that Louis C.K. is kind of the Lydia Tarr of stand-up comedy? Jim Brewer, that's his name. <laughs> Man's opening up for, for Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham, dude, you gotta go see the new Jeff Dunham special. He literally just does 45 minutes of Ahmed the Dead Terrorist. It's so funny. Same Dunham, more Ahmed. Audience waiting with bated breath. Silence! Audience is like, pause champ. I kill you. Audience is like, I can't! He'll kill me! I can't! Is your Jeff Dunham should release a... a, a woke puppet that says, silence, I'll cancel you. That would go crazy. 
Hey, hey, what if Jerry Seinfeld was in the Matrix? Get me out of the Matrix, George! Jerry, Jerry, I'm trying. All I needed you to do is find a payphone. A payphone? It's 2023! I'm gonna be here forever! Yeah. Just throwing it at the wall, seeing what sticks. I imagine this is what, like, the writer's room of uh, every great comedy show is like. It's probably like 90% like the worst. I Actually, if you watch the Mr. Show reboot on Netflix, there is a... Um, there's like a behind the scenes where they show them writing the sketches and punching it up. The reboot is pretty good. And like the, the part where they're in the writer's room is like 95% the funniest people on earth suggesting the worst fucking jokes of all time. So it gets there somewhat. At some point, they go from one out of ten jokes that everybody politely laughs at to like the six out of ten jokes that you see on the show. And I say that in a, in a positive way. Oh, hey, hang on. I think we're, we're back here. <laughs> Still waiting on Barry. Like shit. Hello. Oh. Oh, I'm definitely gonna want to talk about the thumb thing because I'm I, I feel like it's it's not just you who had that problem. So the, the thumb? Yeah, I, th I think we have more than one players who have hurt thumbs in this in really this competition. Yeah. No. I don't have a hurt thumb. I, I have mean, a dysfunctional like... thumb. No. Oh. <laughs> My thumb, well, I could uh, feel a distinct pop anytime I have to throw a shell. <laughs> That's I have a hurt terrible brain. It feels if horrible. That counts. Well. uh... In terms of placing here, we'll start at the bottom. Tied for third place, we had Bear and Ryan, mm -hmm. who uh, both Ooh. equally, I would say, kind of flummoxed by the reverse shell throw. Uh, I think you guys both pretty much had the same kind of issues there. Um, I wouldn't. I would say you're the one with the issue, brother. Oh, okay. well. I mean, we have two players who uh, who mastered the reverse shell throw and progressed further well, for a bit. For <laughs> I a now bit. no longer know how to do it. Well, that did cost you because uh, that did uh, stick you in second place because Jasky, two Ooh. one shots in a row now, wow. the champion, making it to the uh, the absolute nightmarish Bobon section, which that is section is so fucked up, man. What is the insane, fuck? and it is the uh, definitely the hardest section, and some of our players didn't even get to it, but yeah, it is very very hard. I got to see it one time. Justin Burn did, he did, he did, you did full send it on one. I like that. You just uh, ignored the bomb and went right through, tried to go through the pokey. I, th I think I understand what I have to do. You do, no, you were but... doing it right, but it is way harder. I mean, it looks hard and it's harder than it looks. Um, that being said, I do, I mean, look, decline this offer at your will. I totally understand, but uh, I, I will put a little bounty on completing this level. I don't have a no. lot of money. Probably, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. I don't have don't a lot of money. Don't even finish the yeah. thought. <laughs> probably <laughs> not. I'm just saying, I'm willing to give anyone who beats the level $200. <laughs> oh, no, Damn. that's sick. I know Orion over there is like, I wouldn't do it for 2000 but... Yeah. <laughs> Start to talk, at least. <laughs> I'm not made of money, man. I mean, but I just wanted to put that off on the table because I think it's fun. Can I can I go to the menu and watch someone beat this level? Does it store a replay of a, of someone beating this level? Or is, that's Mario Maker 3. That's crazy. That level that's too damn hard, man. Apollo has clips. Okay, so all we need to do is have Twitch release like a feature that adds any sort of sorting or discoverability into the clip. I don't want to go off on a rant here. I, I go looking for a clip of my own stream. There's like two sorting options. Clips by me, clips by other people, and then you, all you can do is sort by views. Catch my ass sorting through like a hundred clips that all have the default name because I sneezed and some freaks out there are getting off to that sick shit. Trying to find the, the one clip where I'm looking. Anyway. Nice branding, man. Two. As you can see, players will be dealing with normal gravity Mario, but anti-gravity enemies and items and objects. They'll have to be balancing shells, jumping off of them, do a reverse shell throw there, 
Walk well, that's here, as far as we got. Z jumps and crisscross back and forth on these falling spinies to jump over into the bomb bomb section where most players will probably be stuck all day because you need to be able to juggle the bomb twice, throw the shell <laughs> in between, and then do another shell juggle here, throw up, throw to the right, jump, reverse throw, and into the pipe. That's your first checkpoint. It's simply just that easy. If some miracle happens and someone makes it this far, players will have, again, another uh, jumping section here with a shell, which, uh, which you know, they've done a shell throw by now. One reverse, up, another <laughs> reverse. <laughs> onto the loop de loop section, which again, if someone makes it here, they'll find it probably to be the hardest section because these jumps are. <laughs> oh my tight. god. Going through the section yeah. twice, that's why it's loop de loop, another throw, landing there, oh, and one final section man. here with a couple of tight shell throws. That is so good. Hi! Oh, you got a toy! It's a, it's a rainbow kitty. She said she mm. loved her so very Whoa, much. Whoa, you love it so much? And then we got this picture from the Claw machine. For Yo! First try. First try, they want to peach you. Yeah. Great I job. The claw, and then our daughter pushed the button, and they were like, Wah. Wow. And then got it. She doesn't even know how lucky we are. She was like, <laughs> That's okay, but I want a Pikachu instead. Wow. And I was like, Oh my god, girl, you don't even know how lucky you are. And then uh, we went to the different store and had the Rainbow Kitty, and wow. she's like, Wow, she's so pretty. And she's in love. Right? <laughs> dee, dee, dee. I need to put my hat on? Dee, dee. We had a great time. That's I good. Think, I think after your stream, if you can do a potty time with her. Oh, okay. I got a chocolate bread for her so she can have that for lunch too. Mm, okay. Let me know when you are ready to go live and I will, I'll send them. Yeah, watch the cord, honey. You don't want to trip over that. Oh, I just didn't want to Okay. Honey, you gotta you gotta walk around the cord. Here. Come this way. No, you don't have to step over it. Okay, that's good. You did good. This is what I look like with a backwards baseball hat, huh? How is it? Cool dad or regular dad? Uncool dad. Please turn it forward. How about this? This is uncool dad. What's up, slugger? Who were you chillaxing with? Which of your homies were you chillaxing with today? Yeah, yeah, it's me. <laughs> big dad, big papa. I love it when you call me big papa. You throw your hands in the air if you are a real player. This is, sir, this is, this, I'm not going to ask you again. Please vacate the premises. <laughs> Classic NPC dialogue. Yeah, yeah, it's me. I like to rhyme. It isn't a crime. Of Curtis Blow, and I'm here to say I write good rhymes every day. I can rhyme with this, I could rhyme with that, I could even rhyme dog with cat. Of course I can't. It can't be done, but if I could, it would be fun. I'm Curtis Blow, the rapping guy. If I see you, I would say hi, because hi is what we like to say when we see people on our way. On our way to the store, on our way to the park, on the way in the day, on our way in the dark. I'd bring a light if it was too dark, because if there was a dog, he'd bark, I'd shine the light in his eyes and then I'd turn and run and hide cause it wasn't a dog it was a big werewolf I'm scared of the wolf and I can hear him sniffing me oh no he's eating me he's eating me he's eating my heart he's eating my head I didn't get a head start now he's eating the rest of my body now I'm poop inside of his small intestine I'm Curtis Blow I'm making my way through the dual out of the water and I'm no, you know hang on sorry I'm just <laughs> POV, you are Curtis Blow getting eaten by a werewolf? Uh, dads, that's true. Dads always be like, oh, you like gangster rap? 
Here's a rap song from the 70s. It's about a guy getting eaten by a werewolf. Oh, what's the matter? A little too dark for you, huh? Oh, sorry. I thought you were into the heavy stuff. Turns out you just like songs about, um, you know, shooting people and buying bling. You don't like songs about real tragedies, like a guy getting eaten by a man who turns into a monster when he's in the presence of a full moon. Okay, I understand. Sorry, I thought you were cool. I thought you were with it. Dads will always be like, I heard you like rock music. Yeah, well, here's what the, the hardest rock song was when I was a kid. Yep. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes, when she comes. You'll, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes, when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. I, I'm not cut out for 13 minutes overtime. I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> blood sugar's crashing, man. My blood sugar's hidden. I don't even know what's measured in. Grams per millimole, something like that. I don't know. It's getting close. To, I guess zero is the same thing, and no matter what the unit is, milligrams per deciliter. That was my next guess. Anyway, what was that? Okay, Kate is going live. I will send you over there. I think I'm done with Mario for a little bit. I don't think I ever want to play it ever again. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Pretty much ruined Mario for me forever. And we'll play something different next week. Maybe Counter-Strike 2 will be out. See you then. Have a good weekend. The end. The end. Don't start the singing, then you can't stop. So true. When you were young, you were the king of Austin Powers. And now you kidnap Nigel Powers as his foe to get the man of mystery to show. This is the room one afternoon where Fat Bastard ate you. And how Felicity Shagwell shagged him real well to place a homing device where no one dared to dwell.